Yud Hey Wav Hey and praise Yud Hey Wav Hey Beit Noon Sophie Yud Hey Wav Hey Royal Family and welcome to our Power of Ten class where we utilize the 10 step study scale for our daily Bible scripture reading. Praise Yud Hey Wav Hey. Today is day nine of the month of Abib in our Holy Hebrew Sacred Solar Year of 6024 FC, which means from creation. I am Queen Vashti Artara Yisrael Bath Yahweh, and I will be presenting today's Bible study class. Today we will be reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 77. Before we begin, we do want to begin with prayer. We always ask our Father for guidance as we go through this Bible study. We want guidance from our Father, Yudhe Wafe, throughout the day. Guidance from our Father, Yudhe Wafe, for all the things that we are about to do in righteousness always. And so we want to begin with prayer. I'm going to ask King Yismaya if you would please lead us in prayer this very early morning. King Yismaya. Praise you, Wabe. And praise you, Wabe, Bet Nun, to feed you, Wabe. Okay, royal family, let's clear our heavens and concentrate on your Wabe. And your Wabe, Bet Nun, to feed you, Wabe. Almost got us out of darkness and into his most marvelous light. As we spread forth our hands from which we came, let us begin. Our Lord and God of our salvation, save us and gather us together and deliver us from the heathens so that we may give thanks unto thy holy name and glory unto thy praises. Blessed be the holy name of Yore Wabe and Israel forever. Of Yore Wabe, let them be confounded that persecute us, but let not us be confounded. Let our enemies be dismayed, but let not us be dismayed. Bring upon our enemies a day of evil and destroy them with a double destruction. Of Yore Wabe, forgive our fathers for breaking their laws, and please forgive us for breaking your laws. And help us to never bring shame upon thy great name, nor reproach against our works. Surely we have turned ourselves unto thee, O Yore Wabe, trying to be upright. And as we confess our faults, please grant us protection against all of our faults, and cleanse us of our secret faults, and guide us unto the best of morals. For surely our prayers, our sacrifices, our lives, and our deaths are all for thee. O Yodei Wabe, say la. Tepe la. Avenu, Sabasimayim, Nikadas, Samarika, Tarbo, Makudeka, Yorse, Rizanka, Kebasimayim, Kembarex, Elukim, Kukanu, Kemanu, Ayon, Ushlapanu, Alkatarun, Timok, Solukim, Gamanaknu, Lagutem Manu, Bero, Tebenu, Riade, Nisayun, Kim, Kasenu, Menora, Kiloka, Amumlaha, Bahagirula, Bahatevre, Leolume, Olamun, Sela. And we thank thee, O Heavenly Father, Yuri Wabe, our eternal and everlasting King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. And let everything that has breath praise Yuri Wabe, and praise Yuri Wabe, praise Yuri Wabe. Blessed be the holy name. And we thank the heavenly Father, Yuri Wabe, for sending down the spirit of truth, whom you sent among us to speak the truth. Your more humble servant, Yuri Wabe, made known so feet, Yuri Wabe, whom was died us out of darkness and into his most marvelous light. And we ask the heavenly Father, Yuri Wabe, to please bless your Wabe, Beit Nun Sophie Yude Wabe, and the nation of Yude Wabe, to be strong, to carry 
on to do thy will and only thy will that you'll have us to do. For we are all for one and one for all. For what I want for myself, I want for my Hebrew brothers and sisters as well. If I had a bowl of soup, my Hebrew brothers and sisters, may I have a bowl of soup and anything else. The motto is, on God you they wave, on mine you they wave, on love you they wave, and one action you they wave. And let everything that has breath, rock the shame you they wave, rock the shame you they wave, rock the shame you they wave, and please bless you they wave, bait no so feed you they wave, the Messiah, say la. Praise you they wave, and praise you they wave, bait no so feed you they wave, the Messiah. Praise you, hey, wav, hey, and praise you, hey, wav, hey, bait noon, Sophie, you, hey, wav, hey, again, welcome, royal family, all right, we are going to begin our study, uh, we're reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 77, and again, before we begin this reading, we do like to read the introduction to the book. We know that this Holy Bible, this book of wisdom is written cryptically. And that means there are many hidden messages, codes, symbolism, and that makes it challenging for the average reader. So what we like to do is we like to read the introduction to gain background knowledge, some perhaps culture, even the author, the date, maybe when it was written, the theme, and sometimes even an outline. And all of this helps us to gain information, that background knowledge that will be beneficial so that we can properly receive the message that he has for us this morning and then we utilize the 10-step study scale to give us that understanding as well so the introduction is helpful i'm going to read the introduction from an authorized version of the king james version of the bible that was made specifically for hebrew israelites by and published by the temple of love publishers out of miami florida many years ago now, I'll be reading from this introduction. Now, many publishers put in introductions before the book. So you may have an introduction in your book before, the Bible, before this book of Psalms. And we strongly suggest and encourage that you go on when you're reading on a daily basis or whenever you pick up the book, whenever uh, book you're reading from, we encourage you to also read the introduction. That'll give you that background knowledge that you may not have gathered on your own. So it'll be helpful to your understanding. All right. So with that, we are reading from the book of Psalms, which is in the Old Testament. And our father, yud heh wav Beit nun Sophie yud heh taught us that the Old Testament is, in fact, our true history. The history of the so-called black man here in America the tribe of Judah, one of the 12 tribes. This Old Testament in actuality is our true history. And so when we read it, we read it with that understanding as well, that this is all applying to us, our history. And you know, when you know your history, that is like foundation for you to move forward. And so we look at this as our history, and we take it today to move us forward as we study and gain proper understanding. All right. So this reads the book of Psalms. Name. The title, Psalms or Psalter, is derived from the Greek word used in the Septuagint. Praises or songs of praise is the title of the book in Hebrew. Now, I'm going to stop right here because I often read from other 
um, introductions as well. And one of the introductions that I read from, I found what the Hebrew word for this is, is Sefer, S-E-P-H-E-R, Tehillim. And that's the, actually the Hebrew word for this book of Psalms, Sefer Tehillim. Okay, authorship. Approximately two-thirds of the 150 psalms are attributed by title to various authors. The rest are anonymous authors. Noted in the titles are as follows. David, 73. Asaph, 12. Sons of Korah, 10. Solomon, 2 and one each to Moses, Heman, and Ethan. These Psalms were written during a long period of time, extending from the days of Moses to the post-exilic era of the Second Temple. The titles, in addition to ascribing authorship, also may provide information concerning the occasion of the composition of the Psalms and musical instructions for proper use in worship. Collection and usage. David exemplified a genuine interest in establishing worship in Israel. Since he began the liturgical use of some psalms, it is reasonable to associate the early collection with him as king of Israel. And that's 1 Chronicles 15 through 16. David had a vital interest in the singing of songs in worship. 1 Chronicles 6, 31. In subsequent periods, Solomon, Asa, Jehoshaphat, Hezekiah, and Josiah may have contributed to the arranged and extended usage of the Psalms. Ezra, in the post exilic era, may have been one of the final editors of this collection. Content and Purpose the Psalms have been extremely popular ever since they were written, reflecting the experiences common to the human race. The Psalms have been read with keen interest by people everywhere in subsequent generations. Various Psalms express the personal feelings, gratitude, attitude, emotions and interests of the individuals who had a similar lot in life. Since each psalm is a separate unit and reflects the author's interest at the particular time and place of writing, it is evident that the purpose varies with each chapter. Petition, praise, penitence, thanksgiving, reflection, worship, all of these and more are exemplified in this compilation of the Psalms. Now, here's the outline for the book of Psalms. Being as diverse in composition as a church hymnal, the book of Psalms is very difficult to outline. Since each psalm is a complete unit by itself, it may be profitable to study the psalms under a partial classification as given below with suggested examples. Okay, and so here is what they give. One, prayers for blessing and protection. That's Psalm 86 and 102. Two, Psalms of Penitence, that's 
chapter 32, 38, and 51. 3. Pilgrim Psalms. That's Psalm 120 through 134. 4. Psalms of Intercession. That's Psalm 21, 67, and 89. 5. Historical Psalms. That's Psalm 78, 105, and 106. 6. Messianic Psalms. Psalm 16, 22, and 110. 7. Prayers of the Righteous. Psalm 17, 28, 40, and 42. 8. Alphabetic Psalms. Psalm 25, 34, and 119. The Book of Psalms has 150 chapters, 2,461 verses, and 43,743 words. Okay, so that completes the reading of the introduction to the Book of Psalms. Now, in this same book, Psalm 77 has a title in the same Bible, and it is, Who is so great a God as our God, and we're speaking of you, hey, wav, hey. And so I'm going to now move into another Bible to do the reading for chapter 77. I'm going to move into the Hebrew Greek Key Study Bible. And this um, chapter here in this particular Bible is called Company, Comforting Comes from God. And we know it's God, you, hey, wav, hey. To the chief musician, to J Jeduthun, a psalm of Asaph. All right. Okay, here we go. Psalm 77, verse 1. I cried unto God, Yudhe Wafe, with my voice, even unto God, Yudhe Wafe, with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord, Yudhe Wafe. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God, Yudhe Wafe, and was troubled. I complained, and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart and my spirit made diligent search. Verse 7. Will the Lord Yudhe Wafe cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Hath God Yudhe Wafe forgotten to be gracious? Hath he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Selah. And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High Yudhe Wafe. I will remember the works of the Lord Yudhe Wafe. Surely I will Remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of thy doings. Thy way, O God, Yudhe is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God, Yudhe Wafe? Verse 14, Thou art the God, Yudhe Wafe, that doest wonders. Thou hast declared 
thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. The waters saw thee, O God, Yudhe The waters saw thee. They were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The skies sent out a sound. Thine arrows also went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. Thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known. Verse 20, thou lettest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Praise Yud Hey Wav Hey. Praise Yud Hey Wav Hey. Bait Noon Sophie. Yud Hey Wav Hey. All right, royal family. That completes the reading of Psalm chapter 77. And now, royal family, we're going to get into the 10 step scale and get into the studies. Now, royal family, if you don't yet have the 10 step scale, you can get it today. You can download it right off the site today and you can have it. Just visit us at www.yahweh144000.com. That's www.yahweh144000.com. And you can have this. Just go in and go order our solar calendar 6024 when you get the solar calendar 6024 the chapter readings are on each day and after the 12th month after those 365th day you will find the solar calendar it's the last page of the calendar you will find i'm sorry you'll find the 10 step scale the 10 step scale is the last page there and so you can have it along with our solar calendar and the scriptural readings. So you can have it today and then you can follow along and you can begin your 10 step study also on a daily basis and you can have it right there. All right, also on that site, you will find the books written by the Honorable Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe. And so therefore you can follow his instruction by reading his books. He's written them for us so that we can move into a higher level of understanding standing. So those books are there for you. Also, there are a few books there written by those of us who have done a study on our holy Hebrew name, and those books are there as well. There are also audios there. Some of the audios there that you'll see there are not audios found on YouTube, so you can go ahead and download those. And we also have some natural products, hair care, skin care, and we also have an elderberry syrup really good for today to help build that immune system. Okay, and so Royal Family also, if you are needing a spiritual home, if you're visiting us and you are liking what you're hearing, you like what you see on our website, you enjoy the messages from our Father, we invite you to join us. You can go on our website once again, wwwyahweh 144000com and there you can send us a message that you would like to gain information on how to join this wonderful movement. Also, in keeping with Malachi 3, 6 through 10, you can send offerings, donations, you can tithe with us. This helps the building of our holy Hebrew nation. Anything that you purchase on the site helps to build our, and continue the works of um, our Father, Yudhe Wafi. We are selected to continue His good works, and we invite all good people, all who want to build together, to join us. Okay, Royal Family, back to the 10 step scale. Let's begin with step number one. Step number one says Bible, Wisdom, Proverbs 4 7. 
So we see that the Bible is our first line of defense. With wisdom, let's go to chap let's go to Proverbs chapter four, verse seven. And let's read it. And it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. And so here we see that wisdom and understanding go hand in hand. They go together. You need the understanding of this book of wisdom. You want to be able to understand it because when you understand, you're better able to keep the law. We have been cursed for breaking the law. We were blessed when we kept it, cursed when we didn't keep it. You can find that throughout our true history in the Old Testament Bible where Israel, and we're Israel, one of the 12 tribes <clears throat> uh, of, J of Jacob, and we read about Jacob today in, in Psalm 77. So we are one of his sons, and so we are the seed. And we, when we followed the laws, we were blessed. However, when we were disobedient, we were cursed. And we have been cursed to the point where we can be an example to the world of what not to do. So we definitely want to gain understanding. As we gain understanding and return to the laws, we're blessed again. And then the world has an example again of what happens when you keep his law. So we have been out here for an example to other nations as to definitely what not to do. And as we return to the laws, nations are blessed through the seed of Abraham, which we are. And you also keep the laws and are blessed. And so you definitely want understanding. And this is what this 10-step scale is all about. And this is what Proverbs 4 and 7 is in pretty much saying. They go together, understanding and wisdom. So we utilize this 10-step scale to gather as much understanding as we can get. And so part A of this says locate and select the scripture in the King James Version, the KJV. Okay, so we have to locate and select the scripture that we're going to study. And it does say the King James Version. This 10-step scale was designed to go hand in hand with the King James Version of the Bible. So if you're using another version, we strongly encourage that when you're doing this particular study, the ten, using the 10-step scale, that you use the King James Version of the Bible. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And so that's step one. So we're going to locate the scripture. We're going to look at Psalm 77, verse 20. That's the scripture. We'll come back and read that in a moment. Let's move into step number two. Step number two says decode English translation of words with concordance. Okay, so see here we see we're going to have to decode. Yes, this is an English translation. You see, the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. And so we're going to have to decode this English translation by going back into the Hebrew, getting the word in Hebrew, and then taking that word to the Hebrew dictionary in the back of the concordance by following the upright number that we're going to be given when we look up that word. Okay, if we were reading in the New Testament, even the New Testament was written in a different language and not English. It was originally written in Greek. And those are italicized numbers that would lead you into the back of the concordance for any Greek word. Today, we're in the Old Testament. And so the words that we're going, the word that we're going to study is going to be the word lettuce, L-E-D-D-E-S-T. And so let's go on and that's going to take us to the Hebrew word and we'll find out what it means on even a higher level of understanding. All right. And so let's go back. Let's read Psalm 77, verse 20. And again, this is, this is a psalm that was a song of Asaph. And this was entitled, The God of Victory. And um, I'm sorry, this was written, but it, it, was, it was entitled, Comforting Comes from God, you hey, wife, hey, from this particular Bible. So we're speaking about our father, you hey, wife, hey, in this verse, verse 20, thou, the thou we're speaking of, 
is our Father, Yudhe Wave. Yudhe Wave, Beit Nusofi, Yudhe Wave. Thou lettest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. So there we have the word lettuce from the word lead. And we're going to go now into step number two. And step number two, again, we're going to decode this word because there's a possibility that there's some deeper understanding here. We know what the word lead does um, literally, but let's go and find out what deeper meaning may be here as well so that we can gain even greater understanding of him leading. All right. So the word leadest, L-E-D-D-E-S-T, we take that to the concordance now. Now the concordance is another tool that we'll have. We have the Bible, the King James Version, and now we have the concordance. I'm going to use the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. Now there are several publishers of the concordance. So whichever uh, concordance you have, that's the one that you'll use for this. And so what you do is you take the word lettuce and you go to the L's in the first part of your concordance. There is um, the words are alphabetized. All the words that are in the Bible are in there and they're alphabetized. So you'll find the word lettuce and you'll find the scripture that's associated with that word. So you'll look for Psalm 77 20 when you find the word lettuce and Psalms will be abbreviated most likely. So you'll find the abbreviated Psalms and 77 20. And when you get there, you'll probably find the upright number 5148. I say upright because that reminds us that we are in the Old Testament and this is a Hebrew word that we're going to pursue because we're in the Old Testament. Okay, so you take that number 5148 and now you go to the back. There are two dictionaries back there. <clears throat> there is the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary, which we'll be in, and then there's also the Greek Dictionary. Now again, Make sure you go to the Hebrew Child D Dictionary with this number because we're in the Old Testament. All right, it's very easy to, with your excitement to just run back there and not pay attention and you'll be in the Greek Dictionary with the same number, but you'll gain, either, you'll gain information that doesn't pertain to the word we're studying. So be careful on this. All right, so let's take 5148 to the back of the concordance. Let's find out what it means. The Hebrew word is Naka, and it means to guide, to transport. And in parentheses, it says in exile. So he can lead us in exile, we're finding out, or it says, or as colonists. So he can lead us in exile, or he can lead us as colonists, is what we're gaining from here, either, either way. It says, bestow, bring, govern, guide again, lead forth, put, straighten, S-T-R-A-I-T-N. So this is what we're gathering from the word naka from 5148. So we record this information. Now remember, when you go into the concordance, ask for guidance from our Father, Yudhe Wave, so that you pull out the information that you need for your understanding. A lot of times there's going to be a lot of information there, and you want to read through it, sift through it, and record in your notes what is important for your study. All right, so let's move into step number three. Step number three now says, gather additional original information. All right. It says, pursue roots and other Hebrew or Greek words numerically denoted as the definition indicates. Okay, so here's where if you were getting any other numbers when you were in step two that came from 
um, this word, you would have recorded them here in step number three. A lot of times when you're in step two, it gives you more than the one number that we got. We got 5148. And a lot of times you'll find that it's not the primary or the first root. And so that it'll give you other numbers where it comes from or where it stems from. But for this particular word, there were no other numbers to pursue. So we can move through step number three into step number four. All right. And so step number four says, consult the lexicon for greater latitude on original information. The numbers are identical to the concordance numbers. Okay, so now we're going to move into another study tool, the lexicons. And there are two lexicons for the King James Version of the Bible. There is the Hebrew child D lexicon, and then there's the Greek English lexicon. Again, there are different publishers that will publish the lexicons. I have the Jacinius for my Hebrew child day lexicon, which will be in today. I have the Thayer's. Greek English lexicon for the New Testament. But today I'll be in the, uh, the, the Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. Be careful again when you go in there because my books look very similar and you want to grab the right book. So we're going to grab the Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. And we're going to take the same number because the numbers are identical to the concordance number. So we're going to take that same number, 5148. We're going to go into the lexicon and see what else we can gather. Now remember, again, here is where I pray and ask our Father to guide me because a lot of times you can get lots of information to sift through. I'm talking sometimes pages of information, but just Pray to our Father. He will guide you to what you need. Read through it, sift through it, pull out what you need. All right. I'm at 5148 in the lexicon. And what I pulled out, it says to lead. Often used of God, and we know it's God, Yudhe Wafe, Yahweh. Often used of God, Yudhe Wafe, governing men. To lead forth. To lead forth back. Okay. So here we see that this is often used for governing men. Okay. And I'm going to say men here. And I'm going to also remind us that the word man means mind. And so for today, we understand this to being governing the minds. Okay. And this is what it's all about. It's all about our new mindset that we are gaining and it is governed, we know, by our Father. Okay, we, we follow His teachings for our governing of ourselves. All right, and it leads us forth. It leads us back to, in a sense, because it leads you back to our Father. We've been eating from the wrong tree for 6,000 years. That tree of good and evil was the tree that we were eating from, from, stemming from back in the garden when we were tempted. Adam, which is male and female, was tempted by Eve, a whole other nation of people with a weaker mindset, only made with one rib, not enough to protect the law. Okay? And we were tempted because she was tempted and Adam was put to sleep never woken up at that time, and so wasn't able to discern properly. And since then, we've been eating, we've all been cast out of the garden because Eve is the mother of all living, and so we were all put out and ate from a different tree. We had heaven right there, and we were forbidden to eat of this tree, but we did. And it let us out. And so now we have, after 6,000 years, because our father told us that after 6,000 years, Satan's kingdom, his tree of good and evil, all the wicked philosophies and teachings and doctrines that stem from that tree would self-destruct, would begin to self-destruct. They were only given a certain amount of time to rule. And this is why things are going on the way they're going on now. And it's not going to get better. The tree of life, uh, the Messiah, 
Yudhe Wafe, Beit and Sophie, Yudhe Wafe come, came giving us understanding, helping us to govern ourselves, and letting us know that we are now to leave that philosophy, the tree of good and evil, and come now to the tree of life, where he governs minds, men and women, who want eternal life. And so he leads us back to him, back to lead back. That's where that lead back led me, leading us back to our original nature. All right. So now this is what I gathered from, you know, step number four from 5148. And so now let's move on to step number five. Step number five says define Hebrew and or Greek definitions of the original word. Select all words selected in step one by use of dictionaries. And so now we're going to be able to define some of these definitions that we had from the Hebrew word naka, And we're going to do that by the use of dictionaries. We're going to now add dictionaries to this study. As you see, we have plenty of tools in our arsenal. We don't use a gun for this. This battle is within, so you don't want a gun for this. All right? We use these tools. The battle now is we have to make a decision as to which tree we want to eat from. Do we want to continue eating from a tree that we know is self-destructing? Or do we want to run out of there into the tree of life? where we know that we're going to gain all the healthy fruit and foods that we should eat that's going to help us with our spiritual understanding so that we can make the proper and correct decisions now. Which tree do we want to eat from? Which fruit do we want to eat from? Okay, and so we don't need a gun for this. We need these tools. These tools will help us as we study the Bible on a daily basis. It will help us to gain the understanding so that we can make the proper decision. And we don't need those weapons for this battle. This is a spiritual war going on inside of your head. So this is what we're doing. We're battling with these tools. And so we have the dictionary. The dictionary is the book of understanding. The Bible is the book of wisdom. Okay, so we're going to need several dictionaries because it says dictionaries. Our Father taught us that one dictionary is just not enough to approach the divine mind of Yudhe Wave. All right, so we're going to take one of these definitions that we had, and we could have chosen several. Okay, we're going to choose the word govern right here. Govern. All right, and so the word govern comes from studying the word leadeth. Leadeth from Naka. All right, because he governs men. He governs the minds. All right, so we're going to use the word govern, and we're going to go to the American Heritage. Let's go to the American Heritage Dictionary and find out what govern means from the word lead, leadeth. Okay, govern means to exercise sovereign authority in. Okay, so here we see there's a sovereign authority. There's a supreme ruler right here, supreme in power, rank and authority. Well, who is that? That supreme ruler, that sovereign, is none other than Yud Hey Wav Hey. Beit Nun Sophie, Yud Hey Wav Hey. He exercises sovereign, supreme power, supreme rank, and authority. And he's the one that governs us. It says to control the speed or magnitude of. And we've seen this in our history and in our daily lives, controlling. Our father controlled even the waters when we were leaving from Egypt. He parted the red. He controlled the waters. It alluded to that here in chapter 77, how the waters were even afraid. The waters moved out of the way. He controlled the speed and the magnitude of it. Parted it quick, fast, and in a hurry so that we could go through on dry land. And then right in time so that Pharaoh couldn't pursue us any further, brought those waters right back down. 
He governed that. He controlled that. He is the supreme, powerful ruler with all authority. This is who led us. He led us by the hand of Moses and Aaron, but he is the true one that was leading. It says regulate. And he shows us how to regulate our behavior through the scriptures, through the law. To control, it says, the actions or behavior of. See, he shows us how to control our actions and how to behave. He gives us 28 moral attributes. He gives us the Bible. 2 Timothy 2.15, letting us know we have to study so that we can learn how to regulate and control our behavior according to the law. This is what leads us. It says to keep under control. Yeah. You see, you want to control yourself and you want to be able to keep controlling yourself by exercising the power that he's giving us to control ourselves, giving us the law. And so we're not uncontrolled. We're not out of control. We're controlled beings. We fully know how to restrain. That's the next, the, the next word, restrain. We fully know how to restrain and refrain from doing things that are outside of the law. It says to exercise political authority, to have or exercise a determining influence. So our father, Yuhewafe, influences and governs, and we are governed by the, his pattern, by being able to, to see his law, his word in righteousness. This is what governs those of us who have decided to come out of the tree of good and evil and be governed by righteousness, by rules, laws, judgments statutes, commandments. These help to govern our behavior. All right. I got that from American Heritage. Let's move on to govern from the Merriam-Webster's. Now, a lot of times I just pull out what is necessary. You can always go back and take a look and see what your dictionaries have to say about this and add them to your notes. From Merriam-Webster's, it has to exercise continuous sovereign authority over. You see, when we return to him, his sovereign authority over us is continuous. It's continuous even if we don't return to him because he knows how to destroy continually anything that is wicked, immoral <clears throat> from that tree, continually. Keep, he'll keep you right there in the, in, in, in what is called, what we call, most people call hell, eternally. Eternally. So he controls that too. He controls you being there e eternally if that's what you choose. Always in a state of tumult, confusion. I don't think those of us want to be there. So we want him to guide and lead us in everlasting life. All right. I'm getting, it says, uh, to hold in check. He teaches us how to hold ourselves in check through the daily study and application of the principles that we gain from this Holy Bible, the Word. We can hold ourselves in check. Now, he also can hold you in check as well. You see how he held Pharaoh in check, put all those plagues on Egypt. And the same thing is going on today. Plagues. We've got a pandemic going on right now. He knows how to hold in check. It says restrain, control. He's in control over all. He teaches you how to be in control so that he doesn't have to exercise, uh, you know, penalties and punishments on you that he will if you're not in control. If you're out of control, you get cursed. See, he controls the cursings. 
If you're in control, you're blessed. And he controls the blessings. We make the decision as to whether we want to be blessed or cursed. All right, let's go to Brandom House for the word govern. Find out what else is there. This is all from the word lead. Govern. To rule by right of authority. It also says exercise. Directing influence over. You know, when you are influenced to do good and you will receive blessings, that is something that I think most people want to be influenced by. They want to influ be influenced by what is right. I think we, we're told that 90% of the planet are good people and want to be ruled and influenced by righteous government. When the wicked rule, and it's only about 10%, the people, they mourn. They're in sorrow. But when you're influenced by, an, uh, by authority that's righteous, the people do rejoice. So we want the influence of righteous government, righteous teachings. 90% of the planet does. It says, to serve as law for. See, under the word govern, it says to serve as law. That's a system of rules, you know, that'll govern your behavior. That's the Torah. That's the first five books of the Bible, the law. And so we now are finding out that it's the law that leads us. And our father gives us the law. He gave the law to Moses. And so Moses was leading from our father's law. It says to exercise the function of government. Okay, so we know that theocratic government is the one that's going to be exercised. All other governments are not even going to exist under the theocratic government that is coming. That's where our father, Yudhe Wafe, rules eternally. Theocratic. All other governments have had a chance. The theocratic government is going to serve now as our system of government. And that's going to come from, again, the law, the law of Yudhe Wave. All right, let's move into step number six. Step number six says, consult several dictionaries and compare, which we've done. It says, include Bible dictionary and Bible interpreter's dictionary. All right, so here is where we use our Bible dictionaries. You can use the interpreter's dictionary of the Bible. You might have the Vines, Expository, Dictionary of Bible Words. Whatever Bible dictionary you have, this is step number six. You'll use it. I'm going to use the Vines Expository Dictionary of Bible Words. I'm going to take the word, I'm going to go back to the original word, lettuce, L-E-D-D-E-S-T. Sounds like I'm saying lettuce but it's L-E-D-D-E-S-T. And the number is again with 5148. I go to the back, to the index first and find, find 5148 because oftentimes the word you're looking for is not there. It's under a synonym, another word, but the number still has the information that you're looking for for that word. So I went to the back. 5148 in the index and I found the word guide and lead and then I went and I pulled out what I felt was necessary for my understanding for the word lead so here we're going to the word lead from 5148 the number that we were studying earlier it says lead I pulled out again I you know I ask our father to give me what he wants me to pull out here lead and guide bring up bring forth and then it actually said Yahweh. Yahweh is the agent of leading or guidance. So he's the agent. So all the leading comes from him. It says emphasis is placed on his role as the leader, guiding his people in the wilderness after their exodus from Egypt. So here we're finding out that Yahweh is the leader. He's the one that was guiding his people. And who were his people? The ones that he led in the wilderness after um, their exodus. That's us. That's the children of Israel. Remember, this Old Testament is all about our true history. We are the ones that were led into the wilderness. And today. 
day, we will also again led into the wilderness. Right here in the hells of North America was the wilderness for us once again. Okay. And so now this time when we exodus, it's not going to be that physical exodus because our father already told us it was going to take over 500 years for us to make an exodus using all of the different methods of transportation, including planes, boats, cars, buses, and everything running 24 seven, it would take over 500 years or so for us to all leave out of here. So it's not like that physical exodus that we did back in Egypt. This exodus where he's going to lead us is a spiritual one, a mental one, where we're coming out of that mindset of America. We're coming now out of that tree of good and evil, those philosophies and teachings from the tree of good and evil into the tree of life, which causes a spiritual exodus. He said, come from out of her, my people. He's speaking now of the mindset that we lost, that we, that we, you know, had through their school system, through their education, through their political systems, through their economic systems, through their spiritual systems of false teachings, through their social organizations, those five power structures. We're coming out of all of that into a spiritual understanding and the truth. This is the exodus from the wilderness today. This teaching that we're doing right now, where we're utilizing this 10 step study scale helps us to connect and come out of her America, the mindset. This is the leading that we're getting today, being led right back to his divine mind for the messages that he wants us to have for today. There were plenty of scriptures relating to this wilderness and Exodus, Exodus 3, 17, I'm sorry, Exodus 13 and 17 and 21, um, Exodus 15, 13, you know, there, uh, there were plenty of scriptures that were noted here. I didn't write them all down. Uh, it also says here, moral guidance from you, from Yahweh. So he's giving us that moral guidance, showing us how to be good, how to make the correct choices, how to have integrity and honesty and truth. This is moral guidance now. And there were many more scriptures for that as well. An example was Job 51, 18 and Psalm 5, 8. There were many. It says, God, Yudhe Wafe, is said to lead his people to comfort and security. That reminds us of the title of this particular chapter 77. He leads us into comfort and security. And how does he do that? He leads us out of the tree of good and evil into the tree of life where there's comfort and security. That's that strong tower. And also it says in the way of salvation. And it lets you to Psalm 139 and 24. All right. That's what I got from out of the vines. And so now let's move into step number seven. Step number seven says, define the Hebrew and Greek definitions, Hebrew for us, Hebrew definitions of the original words, word or words selected in step one by the use of synonym finder. See, now we're going to go into the synonym finder. We're using all these tools. These are the tools that we need. Now we're needing a synonym finder. I'm going to use the J.I. Rodell. I'm going to go to the word govern to find out what this word govern means in the J.I. Rodell. Get other synonyms. Here's where you can pull in your thesaurus. You can use, I'm going to use J.I. Rodell, but there are many synonym finders out there. You're not limited. You can use online sources for all of these as well. I do like to have the book in hand and I use the online when I need to, but you know, go on and utilize it. However, our father moves you to, to get this information so that you can be led out on a spiritual journey back to our fathers and his true nature. So that you can also get back to your true nature. All right. So govern from the J.I. Rodell. There were plenty. I pulled out some. Rule. Reign. 
exercise control over. See, we got to exercise control over our own selves. This is where we start. You can't rule someone else. You got to, the hardest one to rule is your own self. Once you can rule yourself, then you can teach others. Okay. Wield the scepter, wield the power, wear the crown. See, when you are governed by yud Hey wav Hey, he gives you the power to be sons and daughters of yud Hey wav Hey. And you begin to wear that crown of righteousness. Okay, it says occupy the throne. We'll be placed back into the rulership positions in righteousness first within our own selves. And then we can teach the world in righteousness. It says command. There it is. We have to follow the commandment of our father, yud heh when we're governed. So that we can have the next word is order. So that we can have order in our lives. Without Yahweh's commandments, without his laws, judgments, statutes, and commandments, there's disorder. There's wars and things because there's no real structure and order that's being followed. That's right and good for his purpose. It says dictate, run the show. See, our father is going to run this show. He's running this show now. Always will run the show. Supervise, superintend, oversee. Preside over. This is govern. Be in charge of. See, he allowed Satan to be in charge for 6,000 years. But what happened? He didn't rule in righteousness. That's what he was sentenced to see. Could he rule in righteousness after killing his brother, his righteous brother, Abel? He was sentenced to 6,000 years to see could he do well. He couldn't. He was in charge, so he gave him a chance. That was fair. He gave him a chance. But now he's come back. And now he's bringing the tree of life back into the midst and will be in charge in righteousness now of our lives. Because we'll eat from the tree of life only. Take the lead. See, we'll be able to take the lead Following his lead, we can take the lead and govern our own selves accordingly. Keep in line. See, we following the rules, the laws, the judgment sessions, and commandments. We'll be kept in line. Discipline. We'll be disciplined through the law. Maintain order. That's what the law does. That's why Yahweh gave the law so that we can maintain order in our lives. We found out what happens when we don't maintain the order. Chaos, confusion, destruction. Okay, it says regulate. So we know that our Father gave the laws so that we can regulate our behavior, our actions. Control, it says. Get the better of. Subdue. See, when we follow these laws, we get to subdue Satan in our own minds. You see, light. It's always going to be the triumphant one. And darkness will submit to light every time. Okay. Let's move into that special note. A special note says, always ask yourself the question, is this study beneficial to me? If the answer is yes, continue on. If the answer is anything but yes, discontinue. And start on something that will be beneficial. Okay. So here's where you always want to have our Father again leading us. Guiding us. Through this 10 steps. So this can be beneficial to us. All right. And if you have him to lead you through this study by asking him for his guidance. And asking him to, to show you what you need for your understanding. It will be beneficial. Because he is our leader. He is our guide. And so, yes, this is beneficial. Because we understand who should operate and govern within us at all times. All times. 
So let's move into now step number eight. Step number eight says return to the original scripture in the Bible and read it now with new understanding. Okay, so let's go back to Psalm 77 and 20. Thou lettest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. So sometimes he uses others, but it's still his lead. Okay. We were led by the laws of Yudhe the supreme sovereign ruler. This is what was leading our father and his laws. Yahweh gave the laws to Moses, a set of rules, commands, governing our behavior, meant to strongly influence our actions and conduct so that we could become a righteous functioning nation that follows and adheres to Yahweh's moral guidance. Today, we are afforded the same opportunity once again to follow his lead, to follow our father, yud heh wav Beit Nusafi, yud heh wav his lead, the laws, the judgments, the statutes, the commandments, and be blessed once again. Praise Yudhe Wafe. Praise Yudhe Wafe. Beit Nun Sofi Yudhe Wafe. That is the new understanding that I've gained from the word lead. We have to follow his lead, which he gives us in the form of the law. That it governs our behavior. We become the righteous, ruling, governing body who follows his law. All right. Let's move into step number nine. Step number nine says, search the scriptures. That's John 5, 39. Look for helpful course references in several Bibles. Crack the codes with the newfound information. So here we see you need to have course references in your Bible that you can go on and crack codes. Even though you didn't study that particular scripture, you will maybe have a better understanding because of the study that you have done. So if your Bible doesn't have cross references, mine come down the middle margin. I know some Bibles have your cross references coming along the sides of the pages or maybe at the bottom of the page. But there are also some Bibles that are published out there that don't have any cross references. It's just straight reading. No cross references at all. We certainly encourage you for this particular study that you have a Bible, the King James Version, that does have cross references. Now there were many. I'm just going to select one for the sake of time. But of course, you can go back and you can read um, the course references that are related to this particular um, chapter, Psalm 77, verse 20. And for this one, I'm going to go to Exodus. I like to stay in the New Testament when I can. And the Old Testament, I apologize. I like to be in the Old Testament because that's our true history. So whenever I see a course reference that takes us right into the Old Testament, I like to go there. Exodus 13, 21. Let's go there. Exodus 13, 21. And here, it's entitled right here, God, and we know it's Yudhe Wafe, leads them. So let's go here. Exodus 13, 21. And the Lord Yudhe Wafe went before them in, by, went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud. To lead them by, let me start again, verse 21. And the Lord, Yudhe went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go day by day and night. All right. So here we see that our father was with us, leading us by a pillar of a cloud. He led us 
And by night, he was, so in daytime, he was leading us. And in nighttime, he was leading us. So that lets us know there was no time that he wasn't leading us. The daytime was covered. The nighttime was covered. Today, the same way. He leads us in the daytime. He leads us in the nighttime. There's no time when he's not available to lead us. We just want to be following his lead. He's there. He'll lead you. The scriptures are here. The Bible, you have one. He can lead you. You can study day. You can study night. As a matter of fact, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Meditating in the law day and night. I believe that's Joshua. 1.8. We want to meditate in his law day and night. All right. So there's no time when he's not leading you. And that's what I'm gathering from this. There should be no time <laughs> when he's not leading you. He should be leading you all the time, in other words. Okay, let's turn to Joshua 1 and 8. Here it is. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So here it is. We are supposed to be in this book of the law. This is what leads us morning, day, noon, night. Always we're guided and led by his wisdom. And we utilize this study tool to gain the understanding. Okay, let's move into step number 10. Step number 10 says, keep an open mind. See, you want to keep that mind open. You want to preserve the openness of the mind. Now we're right on the right path. Now you want to preserve it, guard it, protect it at all costs. How do you do that? By staying in the law, staying in this book, staying in the word, staying in our father, you you keep it protected and guarded. You don't want anything in the way you want it to be uncluttered, unobstructed. You want to always be able to enter in any time of the day. You want to be able to attain it, access it, reach it. And then you want to be acquiescent. You want to be agreeable to the message that you've received. It's open now, you know, so you want to keep it like that. You want to use any of these given tools. Now you do want to shut it down. Let me say you do want to shut it down to the ways of Satan. You do want to be impermeable impermeable and impenetrable to his ways. Don't let that, those thoughts creep back in. Okay. Keep it only open to the tree of life. Now shut it down to the tree of good and evil. Now use any given tool at any given time, if necessary, all these are your tools here that we went through. Sometimes you have a word that you're studying that, you know, you have a dictionary, you have definition, but you still don't quite get the understanding. Go ahead to your thesaurus, go to your synonym finder, get more understanding. Now, sometimes you've recorded a word from the synonym finder or the thesaurus that you don't quite understand. Go back to the dictionary. This is all about gaining understanding. This requires effort. It requires commitment. This is the path, though. I hope you're understanding. This is the way to connect. This is it. The word. This is it. He left this for us. And this day and night. Use any given tool. All these tools you can use. Let Yudhe Wafe guide you. Always pray. Ask him for guidance. He will give it to you. He hears you. He's within you. He's all around you. He's everywhere. Omnipresent. Okay? He'll guide you. Just ask him for guidance. 
Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sofi, Yudhe Wafe comes in the volume of the book. And that's really good to know. That's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. That's Psalm chapter 40, verse 7. It's good to know that he's in the volume because it means that no matter which book you're in, and there's 66 books in this King James Version, no matter which book you're in, he's in there. No matter what chapter you're studying, that you're reading, he's there. We have the chapter readings on the solar calendar for the day. If you want to know what chapter reading, go ahead and download that and you'll have it. Maybe you've been moved to read a different chapter and that's fine because guess what? He's there too. He's in all the chapters and no matter which verse you've selected, he's in every verse. Why? Because he is the word. We've got to really understand this. He is the word. The power is in there. And you're tapping into it. When you do this 10-step study method, you are tapping in. And you are gaining information. You're having a connection. And he's going to speak to you. He's going to give you a message. This is a very important study that does require commitment, time. And hopefully you have time to do this every day. We certainly hope that this has been beneficial to you as it has been to those of us here. Um, we're going to go on and close this study out. Of course, you can continue in your journey on your studies, in your studies. This doesn't have to be the end of your studies. It shouldn't be. This is all day, every day, 24-7. <laughs> your mind is stayed on him. This is perfect peace. All right, we're going to close this out with prayer. I'm going to ask King Yismaya if you will lead us out with prayer this very early morning. King Yismaya. Praise you, Hewabe. And praise you, Hewabe. Okay, royal family, let us stand and face the east from which we came. Let us begin. Tesla. Avenu Sabasamayin. Ikadash, Samarika, Tarbo, Malkuteka, Yarse, Rajankar, Kebasamayin, Kainbare, Elukim, Kuganu, Kainlanu, Hayom, Oshlaklanu, Alkatavan, King of the Solar Kim, Yamanatnu, Lakotemlanu, Bell, Tevenu, Liade, Nisayun, Kim, Kasenu, Mihara, Iloka, Amunlaha, Bahadivara, Lakapret, and we thank thee, O Heavenly Father, Yeriwabe, our eternal and everlasting King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. And let everything that has breath praise you, Yeriwabe, and praise you, Yeriwabe, Beit Nun Sophie, Yeriwabe, Namusai, Selah. Praise you, Yeriwabe, praise you, Yeriwabe, Beit Nun Sophie, Yeriwabe, Namusai, Selah. Yes, praise you, hey, Wafe, and praise you, hey, Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie, you, hey, Wafe. Have a glorious day in you, hey, Wafe. I love you, royal family. Shalom, Uvraka, which means peace and blessings, royal family. Shalom. Shalom.